everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. Today I'm going to be reviewing a wine whose name I am most likely going to butcher, so I apologize. This is how you know it's a French wine. So today I'm going to be reviewing the 2019 La Vie Ferme. I, I know I'm supposed to roll an R or something in there. I, I can't, or have a softer close to that last word. I can't do it. I've tried. I just can't do it. It is 13% alcohol by volume, paid $8 for it at my local store. Now this is a Vin de France, which is the lowest classification within the French classification system for wines because the wine can literally come from anywhere in France. There's not a specific area. Now, with that being said, screw top plus one, that doesn't mean it's a bad wine. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about their rosé is for an $8 rosé, it basically beats the pants off of anything else around it. So if you if you ever get a chance to try the rosé, definitely get it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a work wife that is super, super, super picky about her rosés, and that is her favorite bargain rosé. The next rosé she drinks after that is like a Texas rosé that's like $30 a bottle. So that that goes to tell you even picky people can enjoy a Vendée France. Uh, however, let's get into the analytics of this wine. So from a color standpoint, you are light ruby, no artifacts, no cloudiness. Actually, you know what, after looking at it, based upon the, what I'm seeing on the side structure of the wine on the glass, I'm gonna say medium. I'm gonna change it to medium, not, not pale. Uh, on the nose, so first thing I'm in there is raspberry, a little bit of uh, cranberry, a little bit of black cherry, something very specific about this wine. It, it, so interesting enough, it, it has like a touch of like, herbed goat cheese to it. Most red wines have to go through malolactic fermentation anyway as part of the process, so having that cheesiness is there, but kind of the herb, the gaminess and the uh, the herbal note was not expected. It also has like a note of like, like boysenberry. I'm gonna have to go back to IHOP and smell the syrups again, but it smells like boysenberry. And there's just a kiss of cinnamon in there. Uh, but how does it taste? Medium body, medium alcohol, medium tannins. Everything about this one is pretty medium. Okay, skipping ahead now, medium finish. Medium plus acid though, medium plus acid. Uh, I mean, overall, it's it's a table wine. It, 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 it's, a, it's a wine that can pretty much pair with just a generic French meal. A generic French meal that wants a red wine, this could go with it. Now, I'm not saying specific things. I'm not talking about like roasted boar. And, though I probably could stand up a little bit to, with that. I just doesn't have the smoky notes to help carry it with it, or probably the, the tannins. But for like your average French meal, where you're gonna have some herbs, some butter, you're gonna have some lean meats, you're gonna have some vegetables, this is a wine that works. It's a wine that you could have every night at $8 if you wanted to. But what's the rating on it? Let's get to the blick. So from a balance standpoint, full point, no complaints. Length. Medium finish, half a point. Intensity, medium on the nose and on the palate, so half a point. And in terms of complexity, I'm getting a good amount of kind of these red fruit notes that are in there, but I'm not getting too much secondary other than like that touch of herbs and that kiss of cinnamon. But you still earned half a point. So in the end, I'm gonna give you good. And the reason why is I feel like if this had more body and more tannin, so it could stand up to a little bit more, then I feel like this would be a a very good wine. However, if you want a wine that you can open and have as a solo drinker, a red wine that you can open and have as a solo drinker, without having to do a lot to it, this is ready. If you want one that will pair with a generic French meal that's not something too heavy or specific, and you don't want to spend more than $8 at the store, this will work too. So, I mean, it has its place, and it's not a bad wine. As a matter of fact, it's good. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the 2019 La Vieille Ferme? Ferme, Ferme I, can't, I can't pronounce French. You all know this. This is why you make fun of me about it in the comment section. If you have, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. Now I need to go load up a uh, translation. Oh, God, I can't even talk. This day's over.